Today on Drawly, we are drawing the same portrait. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Abby. And we are self-taught artists documenting our journey of learning to draw, which is of course better with friends. So click that subscribe button if you are new around here and share your artwork on Instagram with the hashtag Drawly. So Abby, we're drawing the same exact portrait, but um, the end result isn't exactly the same. No, I, which is surprising. We've taken all the same tutorials and uh, the same lessons, but it's so interesting to do this exercise and see just where we're just different. In yeah, our the, the, getting to see approaches. them side by side here is going to be really cool. Yes. I think for me, just to see like how we develop like in terms of speed, like what we focus on. Right, right. I appreciated that we found this reference image and we already knew we were going to go like whole hog on it versus a lot of the time we find I find a reference and they're all almost in my mind like a, a sketch a first. sketch like I'll <laughs> see if this goes anywhere if it does it does great but this really pushed me to try to do the foundational work uh, as well as I could the first time around um, so that's how it was different for me so we actually did two portraits each, mm -hmm. and we're working on the uh, second one as well. Yes, we that'll have be this, up later. Yeah, we have this one done. The other one will be next um, mm -hmm. in a couple of days. But this one I really struggled with. I, I think I'm doing a little better on the other one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like with both, I'm really getting the feeling of hitting a ceiling pretty hard where I just get it to the point where I'm like, this is the best that I'm capable of right now mm -hmm. but i feel like there's more for me to do and it doesn't look the way i want it to look um like so, you just don't know what else to do yeah like there's some technique or something that i could apply that would really like bring this to the next level so to me these were a big signal that it's about time for me to start looking for another like tutorial or yeah, lesson yeah that's absolutely what that means mm -hmm. if you feel like you're hitting that place where you don't know what else to do mm -hmm. that's, yeah that's exactly what that is and especially hitting a point where i'm like this just doesn't look the way i want it to look and i spent four hours on it and i'm not getting to that point um, but it was four still, hours is a long time, by the way, it, for me, for me. Yeah. Yeah. I work, I work pretty slowly. I do work pretty slowly. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, at four hours, we both have the same level of paint on the canvas and, uh, or excuse me, I have at four hours, the same amount of paint on the canvas that you have at like a much earlier time. Where I get to at two hours with this is mm -hmm. where it stays. Mm -hmm. I work on it for another hour and 20 minutes mm -hmm. for a total of three hours and 20 minutes. Uh -huh. And it changes like barely at all. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, no, I kept, I kept working on this for a long time. I actually was, I was fine with the sketch and this isn't even like the end of the sketching process. I still have a lot more that I do with the sketch because obviously it looks super wonky right now in the eyes. Um, but no, I, I don't know. I need, I need, I'm ready for the next thing. Your, if you think yours looks wonky in the eyes, wait till you see how mine goes. One thing I didn't do with this that I am doing with the other portrait that I need to do more is once I do this rough sketch, mm -hmm. I need to do like just a new layer and try to do like a cleaner sketch on top of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really valuable for me. But the main issue with this portrait, like in total for me, was the addition of the hand. Oh, see, the hand is what I started with and got done first and then just kind of left as is. I was fine with the hand, even though it wasn't the greatest hand. The hand just took me, like, it just took so much additional time. Mm -hmm. And it still looks terrible. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't look terrible. I just struggled with the face. I struggled with the colors. Anytime I've got an up-close face, the hue shifts and value shifts, I really struggle to make those appear like smooth transitions, uh, but while still making sure I'm getting all the nuances in that I want to get in. Yeah, I actually really don't like the lighting in this portrait just because it's really blown out and like everything kind of crunches in this like high, high intensity light zone on the face. Mm -hmm. And it, it reads a little awkwardly and it was really hard to get some of that to to read here for me in the paint. Yeah, 
Definitely. No. And I tried to stylize this a little bit. I enlarged the eyes and just said, oh, it's going to be stylized. I don't think that's how that works necessarily. Just making the eyes bigger. I think that I'm realizing there's a lot more science that goes along with that. Oh yeah. Rather than just being like, <laughs> they're bigger now. I took these eyes, bloop, blew them up. And that's style. I mean, stylized in essence just means anything that's not realistic. Yeah. It, it has some kind of you know, style added That's, on. Yeah. So everything yeah. that we're doing is stylized for sure. It's true. Um, I, I mean, I'm not trying to go for realism, but in this other portrait, I really started it with the mindset of like, I'm going to give my freedom, like I'm going to give myself freedom to not try to make this look like the reference. Mm -hmm. And that's something I want to do more because I get so stuck in this phase of being like, oh, I need to get the uh, shape of the nose exactly the same or the shape of the eyes, mm -hmm. like perfect. And I'm like, no, I should just like use this as a like piece of inspiration mm -hmm. rather than, and, and that's how I want to like think of references in general, like more as inspiration and less of like, this is exactly what it needs to be. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about like how you tackled this portrait because clearly we're at different stages of the development process. Yes. Cuz like I'm laying in all my base colors right now. You are just now starting to do that, but you like you do all of that at once here on the hand. Yeah. Like I said, I kind of wanted to get the hand just done and figured out so I could focus on the face cuz I knew the face would take me a really long time. Um, and the hand just looked like a lot of fun to work on too. I like the, the way hand it looked like fun. To work I on. thought so. Yeah. Since when are, since when is drawing hands fun? I think hands are fun to draw. I had a whole video on our channel that was just me drawing hands and I had a blast. So. I, I think I drew like 10 hands over the past like maybe like a month or two ago. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't even worthy of a drawly episode. Aww. I'm not I'm not doing anything with well, these. 10 is a very introductory number of hands to draw. So. Well, I didn't draw them, I painted them. Yeah. So I, you know, I went through the whole, uh, the whole process. Oh, Thank well, you very much. You'll get there, you'll get there. Something I was experimenting with was drawing, uh, making a new layer, fading out my old drawing and like drawing over top of that and like iterating on that process to mm -hmm. like, see how many times I can do that and how much improvement am I getting mm, from it. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that like two layers is more than enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've tried that once with a, a portrait of a, a guy standing up. He had some cool jeans and a shirt and I gave some him a cool skull jeans. for a head. Oh yeah. yeah, I do remember him. Yeah, that was a big iterative process for me and I really enjoyed it. I did improve quite a bit with the iteration, so. Never a bad idea to try that out. It's a, I guess at the end of the day, it's just how much time are you willing to put into these kinds of things and how far are you willing to take it? Because it's just fine to call it done on the first try, but what? Yeah, I got about like maybe an hour or two in on this about mm -hmm. like where I am right now. And I was like, I think I should just like start over on this and just like redo it. Oh my gosh, did you? I was like, no, no, Good. <laughs> no, I didn't because I was like, this is like not how I should have started this. I should have gone in more with the intention of it being like, not, I shouldn't have been as strict on myself with mm -hmm. what I was doing mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty far in here. Like, I think I'm, yep, at an hour and a half, and I have done the color of the hands. And that's not even all the color I do on the hands. <laughs> so, yeah. 90 minutes, <laughs> Very wow. slow, very slow. Um, I think a lot of the great artists seem to be able to do a lot with a lot less in the time department. Uh, but hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere and here's where I am. So you know that I'm going through the um, Andrew Cockroach course. Yeah. I, I kind of like slowed down on that because it's not exactly what I wanted from uh, this artist in terms of like educational content. Mm -hmm. I really like their work, but the course is a little less structured than I would have hoped, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, so I like watch them occasionally. Uh, but in the most recent one I watched, there is this website 
uh, oh. that I mentioned to you. Yeah, and you didn't tell me what it was. You said, oh, I'm going to tell you about this. No, I'm just teasing it right here because I'm actually not going to tell you what it is right now. We're going to look at it coming up very soon later this week. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. And uh, we're going to use it for inspiration for some drawings for next oh, week. Oh, okay. I love that. So do you remember the earthsworld.com? Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That website that has, for those that don't know, like really nice photographs of people at like American fairs and festivals. Yes, yeah, very real people, not a bunch of models and celebrities if you ever get tired of just drawing the same faces over and over. This is similar to that, like mm -hmm. in terms of reference that we can find, but not exactly the same like vein. Okay. You'll like it a lot. I bet I will. I'm so excited. So, you know, just a little tease for what's coming up. Yeah, so much to look forward to. This is awesome. Oh, getting some shadows on your face. Yeah. Yes, finally. Oh, oh, I wanted to ask you, did you sample any colors from your reference? I don't think so. So I started to do that initially, yeah. and then I was like, oh wait, I, this kind of feels like cheating. So like I took that layer, I faded it all the way down to like 5%. I was like, it, it's kind of there still. I was mm -hmm. like, but I'm, I'm gonna pick my own colors and try to make this work. Mm, yeah, no, I maybe like sampled one at one point just for a weird area where I was having trouble more with the value than the color. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think I did. Yeah, I, I think I, prefer not sampling. Yeah, it's fun to not sample. I, I think when I start sampling colors, it it's starts to look like like weird in like some regard. Like a paint by number. Yeah, kind of, yeah. kind of. Or like, there's just so much variance in terms of the color that is there. It starts to like get away from the like painterly aspect that mm -hmm. I do like about this. Yeah. Speaking of, I really wish that my work had taken on a more painterly aspect. I think that's what I'm losing and want to recapture in this particular piece is that look of painterliness. And I keep on smoothing everything out and smoothing everything out because she's got very smooth, you know, features. And in the end, I'm left with kind of a, like an airbrush, soft, fuzzy, digital portrait when I would want something that looks like a painting with texture and volume. So I need to get back to that. I think it might help me to re-watch some of the Ahmed al Duri lessons on that mm. because it's been a long time now since I've looked at those mm -hmm. and it may be interesting to review those at this stage. Or I might uh, see if I can watch some of the tutorial by Ben, what's his name? Oh, Eblen. Ben Eblen? Yeah. yeah, I'm really curious to check out his tutorial too. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, there's actually an artist by the name of Esben Lash that uh, somewhat recently, earlier this year, came out with um, a t uh, course, a small mm -hmm. course, similar to Ahmed al mm -hmm. Um And they did like a little convo on Ahmed's uh, YouTube channel where they were hanging out and talking about his course and mm -hmm. art and life and everything else. Oh, I want to <laughs> see that. So, very cool. Uh, great conversation to check out, but his uh, course looks really similar in terms of the type of content that is being taught uh, to the course that we went through, mm -hmm. but it's just from a different teacher, and that might be a nice new perspective for us mm -hmm. to have something to go through if we're looking for another course to pick up somewhat soon here. Yeah, and didn't Ahmed al Duri come out with a second course, or is he about to? Uh, it's not out yet. He's been teasing it, so... Teasing it, okay. But, okay. but you know, when that Meds Map 2 comes out, we can definitely check it out. Yeah, see what's yeah. Going on. Well, these are great, uh, great ways to improve, definitely. Plus, it's just nice to have um, structure for a bit, not needing to say like, oh, what do I draw today? But having somebody else say, you're drawing this today. I find that extrinsic motivation there in doses goes a long way in the learning process. Yeah, I think it, I think it really depends on the person. I think a lot of people do enjoy having courses and tutorials to go through. But a lot of people also enjoy like, no, I want to draw exactly what I want today. Mm -hmm. We've been doing a ton of portraits lately um, to the point where like, I'm not sick of drawing portraits, mm -hmm. but when we started doing Drawbly, we never did faces ever. We, we were like, oh, we're not ready. <laughs> yeah, we're like, no, there's one thing we don't do on Drawbly and it's faces. Because we're so bad. But now all we do is faces. We need to change this up. So that's why I came up with the idea the other day. I was like, well, like, what if we kind of swap between like doing 
faces, landscapes, have a, a day where we're just like, you know, sketching and doodling, another day where we do a study. So we just like have a cycle to go through. Oh, as well as like concept art, I thought would be really cool. Ooh, concepting would be fun. We don't do a lot of concepting and we've mm. talked many times on Drawbly about how that's so different mm -hmm. from the actual act of creating art. Right. So we might as well get started on that early. Oh yeah, we, yeah, that's a good know, point. Well, we're still early in our drawing careers. Exactly, mm. exactly. No, that would be really fun. We should definitely try that. So coming soon, more variety in what we uh, draw here. Potentially. <laughs> but I, I, I still really enjoy doing portraits. Like I said, I'm not sick of them. No. Um, but we have been doing a lot of portraits. Yes, we have. Oh, you're getting some noise onto your portrait? Yeah, if you make a layer, fill it with white, set it to multiply and add noise to it, you can add some noise to your drawing. Oh, and then you a have separate a lot, layer. Yeah, and you have a lot of control then over like, like then if you want to go back and work on the original portrait, you won't mess up your noise layer. Yeah, I like that. Quick tips with Drawbly. Add oh. some noise with multiply on a white layer. Yeah. I Bada was boom. I think I applied noise to my regular layer and I think your advice there would have been better. I tried to give it a backdrop of a uh, canvas print oh, in okay. the background later on. And even that I'm kind of like guessing at how to make the effect that I want to there. Don't you have like a bunch of canvases that you downloaded? Yeah. So I put one of those like an underneath my other layers, but then how do you get it to show unless you drop the opacity of all your other layers? See? Oh, you just set them to a specific layer type like multiply or overlay. Oh. But you'd probably put your canvas layer on top and adjust the canvas layer. I can show you how to do it. Oh, later. maybe adjust the canvas layer to like an opacity? Nope. I, I'll show you how to do it later. Oh. It's, it's super easy. Okay. It's exactly what I just described by setting my noise to multiply. Same thing. Just throw it on top. Oh. Boom. Got some canvas texture. Texture is really cool because I think it does give a lot of life to an artwork mm -hmm. um, to where like digital art specifically feels I don't even know how to describe it like almost flat mm -hmm. like because there's no texture right? it's just so smooth some of the time mm -hmm. which is why I do like having a lot of hard edges and brush strokes mm -hmm. Even though my thing that I'm creating right now is so like dirty and sketchy and all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was with this portrait. I freaking hated it though. Like it just You did what... not have a good time with this one. I I really didn't like the lighting going on with this. I I think um so the way we started this was I picked one for us to work on and then you picked one for us to work on. And I would have never personally picked this portrait for myself because I thought there were just so many confusing, weird elements. Like, look at the transition of how burnt this lighting is on the upper lip, and then it fades into this, like, almost, like, black, dark area of the face, like, mm -hmm. so quickly. So really sharp lighting like that is so awkward on a, on a face like this, hmm. unless it's, like, a really chiseled, kind of hard, planar face. Oh, okay. So with a feminine face, you know, light fall off tends to be softer to indicate more rounded shapes. But here it was like contrasting with that idea in some areas. It felt a little awkward. I like that it. it's a challenge. How do you make a nice soft feminine face but still have these high contrasts? Yeah, so I played with like, I was just like, whatever. I'm just going to try to correct some of this and make the lighting more simple. So I started like blending in some more light areas and dark areas and simplifying some different areas. Okay. Just trying to play with it. Cool. What were you cool. working on here? Look, look how like, look how bright that is. That's like nearly white on your side of the face there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. The whole thing is a bit much. Um, yeah, I was just working again. Like I said, I was just really struggling to get a smooth texture that looked smooth intentionally. And then the balance between that and being too smooth and like not having any correct texture. It's not painterly, but it's also not just a perfectly like smooth piece. So I kind of got stuck somewhere in the middle and never quite pulled back out of it. But that's okay, you know, that's uh, part, of the, part of the journey. I like what you did with your eyelashes and your hair though. You got some really cool texture there. Oh, thank you. I am, um, and your eyebrows. I really need to take some notes on how you did those lashes. 
Oh, thanks. Yeah, they they plagued me. That's that's for sure. Actually, they did quite a bit. Yeah, um, mine mine just never got off the ground here in terms of like getting from this sketchy stage. So I was just fighting it the whole time. Your values to... are excellent though, and your colors that you've chosen are very accurate to the form. And really, she's got a lot going on that I think is worth being pleased with. Um, it just didn't quite get to a point that you know you were pleased with it yet, but. Who knows, maybe given a couple more hours, smoothing out some of those kind of scratchy lines that are like defining her face and stuff, um, you might have been a little more pleased with it because I think there's a lot to be pleased with. Potentially, potentially, but I think uh, if, you know, this was a head-to-head -head challenge, uh, a little bit of a versus, I think you definitely take the win on this one. I feel like it's a win where it's like, it's a 5K and we're the only two people in our age division competing. So even though we come in like dead last of the whole 5K, I ran two feet in front of you and I'm like, the winner! No, you, you won this one feels. by a lot. Your portrait looks really cool. Thank the you. The lighting, the hand looks great. You did a really good job on this one. Thank you, thank you. Well, I think you did work that was worth celebrating as well. And if you want to do some work that's worth celebrating as well, <laughs> click that like and subscribe button. And share your work on Instagram with hashtag Drawbly, because drawing is better with friends. And this is the part where we say... Goodbye. Goomba. Yeah, you definitely won this round. 100%. Well, I bet we both know who's going to win the next round. The next one I did a lot better on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see it.